high difficulty racing. That is in the C category. We see Stella de Carava take her first vault. Oh, a step back on landing. That's a handspring from Senesol with a Barani or a half twist out. Not really a very together vault. And she scores only 9.65. There's that step. She's going to have to do a lot better to hope to get into the medals to set the Soviet on the medal trail once again. That full twisting straight to Kahara. Landed it much better. Here we watch the Sukahara, but this time with the full twist, the highest Harris vault. Up she goes, wraps the twist, loses the legs a little bit, but a good score, 9.8. Steffi Kraker from East Germany, a very powerful girl, very strong on the vault. German crowd acknowledge that that is a good vault and they're well satisfied with it. Let's hope that Steffi is too. So listen to the East Germans roar. They all shout stick, which is their equivalent of spot it, land it perfectly. And she just does just that to score 9.8. It's a good, a good start for Steffi. Second vault. It's the average of the two, so this is going to be the two. There's the roar again. Landed that one well. The Full twisting, Tatsu Kahara. It seems here that the tactic is to start off with a relatively safe vault, straight, and then add the twist into the second vault when they've got a, a reasonable score behind them. Here we see it. Nine point seven. Now fighting for a medal seeing if she can come back in style. Maxi Gnauk from East Germany. Oh, and Maxi starts off with a full twisting Sukahara. Lost the legs a little bit there. Perhaps she can improve on the second one. Legs played. She brings them together here, but especially in the tuck vault, they do tend to lose them a bit. But Maxi, the leader, as she went into this Final section on the preliminaries, 9.8. That puts her in the lead at the moment. If she can keep it going. Oh, excellent. And that should be good enough to give her the gold medal. And she will be really pleased, although we don't see much reaction from her. Yes, there it is. 9.8. To give Maxi the gold medal. The first Maxi now, second Stella Zakarova, and third Steffi Kraker. The second piece of apparatus now, the asymmetric bars. Julian McNamara from the United States. We're looking for movements that travel over and under both of the bars, showing handstands, somersaults, pirouettes. Grand circle and into the dismount. Front somersault with a twist on the end. Very good routine. She'll be really delighted, I think. Congratulations from her teammate. There we see from the eagle catch. Back straddle over the bottom bar. And the score is 9.9 .9 for Julian McNamara. Olga Bicharova from the USSR, the star of these championships from the women's side, and yet remarkably this the only final that she's in. Shows both her good all-round ability and the standard of the other girls in these competitions. Oh, a little slip there. Short clear to handstand. And the giant circle, she finds that easy. Shoot, front somersault with half twist. 
whatever happens here, she'll not be upset because she's really a little bit behind the other girls in this apparatus final. She's well down the list on her score, and I don't think she's going to score too well on that, Monica. No, she did make a slip, whether or not we see it in this slow motion shot. 9.55, rather disappointing for little Olga, Bi Olga Bicherova. It's also been a very disappointing competition all round for Elena Davidova, who we see her with a chance to pull something back on the asymmetric bars. There we saw the catch-off. Again, she has to go to the bottom bar to stick to the rule book. And a one and a half twist to beat the bar and preparing for her dismount in style. Over she goes, shoot from pike to land and a good, a good routine from her. Waiting for the crowd, she's still a favorite. There we see her giant circle to that. Kachev across the top bar and the back circle onto the bottom bar. A nice smile there from Elena, despite for her a very disappointing day. But a good score on the bars, 9.8. Now Maxi Knaut from East Germany. This now a head-to-head -head battle between her and Ma Yan Hong. They were joint world champions at the last world championships in Fort Worth. And once again, they come into this leading the competition equal with 9.9 .9 each after the preliminaries. And in this routine, she is showing everything that is asked for in the asymmetric bar demand. A lovely routine. A little falter on landing there, possibly deductible. Maxi there getting a huge reception from the East Germans. Thousands of them here. And she deserves it because it's been incredible the way that she's bravely come back into this competition. There's her shoulder straddle. And hop over the high bar. Beautiful worker. Cheering it through the crowd. Trying to will the judges into giving her a high score. They desperately want her to get another gold medal. She's wonderful. There's the cheer. Ten dead. Maxi cannot be beaten. That's got to be a second gold medal for her. There's the half twist over the bottom bar. Maxi is a great technician on this piece of apparatus. Magic tension, a stretch through the body. There's a smile from Na Maxi, but next we have Mayan Hong. The pressure must really be on her now in this routine. She is a pure artist on this piece of apparatus. Full twist in the handstand, beat. Hecked half turn to catch the bottom bar and another half turn to catch the top bar. Beautiful. Shoulders to handstand, she's got absolutely everything in the routine. And we now look for the most unusual dismount. An inward one and a half semicolon with one and a half twist. The judges have put themselves in a very difficult position now. They've given Maxi a 10, but that, in my opinion, is really a cleaner routine. As we see this beautiful shape go through, you can hear the whistles, obviously, the discontent about the score. The score's gone up 9.9. .9. The crowd don't like it. They think that if Maxis is worth a 10, that had to be, but she's got 9.9. .9. Chinese looking very, very unhappy. Ma Yan Hong can't see what she did wrong, but there it is. That's how it stands. And Ma Yan Hong missing from the line up there. 
Now that seems to me as if the Chinese must have decided that they're so upset with that mark they're refusing to take part in the ceremony. They did this in the European Championship earlier this year in the World Student Game, sorry, in Romania. But there it is, Maxi Nauk first. Maxi winning it with that 10. The Chinese thinking that Ma Yan Hong should at least deserve it. There's Ma Yan Hong's name. They've announced her, but she's not there. And again, the whistle from the crowd and the embarrassed look from the girls who can't give away their glassware. So first Maxi, second Ma Yan. piece of apparatus after that very controversial ending to the asymmetric bars. Chen Wen Yang starting her beam routine with quite an original mount. She was rather wobbly in the team championship. Let's see if she can find her stability and look for a medal. Interesting that the Chinese have obviously decided that they're going to go through with these apparatus finals, despite that protest over Ma Yan Hong's mark in the asymmetric bars, because Chen Wen Yang has come out to perform must be difficult for her, Monica, because these things affect the whole team. Oh, yes, it uh, has an emotional effect on them, but it's pleasing to see that uh, they treat it as history and they've got to get on with the championship. In the routine, we're looking for two movements of superior difficulty because this is a class three, an international final championship but they must also show basic jumps and leaps. A little wobble there, but she... Oh, and again. She's got most of her difficulty over with. Now she's coming up to the dismount. Cartwheel, double twisting back somersault in a puff position. A little tidier than she performed before. There, that very unusual spin on top of the the beam, it's back work, and there's her score, 9.7, 9.7 for Chen Wen Yang. Now, approaching the beam, Davida. Let's see if she can get in amongst those gold medals today. They've eluded her so far. She really has to concentrate. And it's such a pity because she's such a beautiful gymnast. of her really needing a very good exercise here because she's 0.075 adrift. She's got to outscore Bilatova by at least a mark. Oh, and she's off and not on a high difficult movement either, only on a, a medium difficult movement. And another wobble. She must recover. She must grab hold of herself. What a disappointing championship she's having. You can hear the crowd reaction, they're so knowledgeable, they watch this girl perform probably hundreds of times, and they really know that something's very wrong for her because she's the most consistent performer usually in the Russian team. A better dismount than before, we saw her stumble on that. I think that the Russian crowd must unnerve her because they do show their discontent towards her when she falls off. There's her straddle balance. And her score, 9.9. .9. Sorry, 9.15. Now, Falatova has to try to better Davidova's performance. Maria Falatova, the senior member of the Soviet team, trying hard to set an example to the younger performers. Maria is a most positive performer. She always looks delightful. And the look on a gymnast's face gives away exactly how much tension they are feeling. And Maria does tend to be able to disguise this by a, almost a plastic grin. Oh, dear. 
I don't think I've ever seen two Russian girls fall off the beam in the same competition, Monica. Yes, I think that we've probably seen the poorest beam work in this championship as regards falling and lack of concentration, but the crowd, of course, has been very, very reactive. 18,000 sets of eyes on these girls at the moment. Now building up to the end of her routine, flick flex, flick flex, double tight back somersault. She did that beautifully, but no good at all because that fall has to cost her at least 0.5. And that score just come up for Lardova, only 9.3. Davidova, remember. Now really gives a chance to Tracy Talavera. And she looks very, very businesslike as she starts her routine. Tracy has a very, very original routine. She's got lots of intricate movements that not many of the performers have demonstrated on this piece of apparatus. It's been one medal for America on the asymmetric bars. Just let's see if we can see another on beam. She's already seen her fellow American, Julian McNam McNamara, really falter because she came into this competition, remember, leading. And that's the one American gone. So she's and that training. was super moving. Men's pummel work on beam, and this is something new in this championship. The whole routine has been positive. Finishing with a double, a full twist, I beg your pardon, full twist on a fault to finish. A very businesslike routine. The speed at which she performed this showed her confidence. A good score for Tracy, 9.7, and that should surely take America into the medals again. Yes, leaves are still behind Chen Wenyang of China. And here's Maxi Gnauk. Now, could she possibly make it a third? She goes into the final exercise, second after the preliminary. On this routine, Maxi only needs 9.65 to high for the first place but she really needs the highest score to be sure of that gold medal providing she lands everything securely it really looks as if they've handed it to her on the plate there's one wobble she can't afford too many of them it's not always the easiest situation to get onto a piece of apparatus knowing that you haven't got to do an awful lot to win Confidence growing now. A double twisting. Back somersault to finish a very, very confident routine by Maxi. That must surely give her the gold medal. Here we see an original mount of flick flap onto the beam. The East German crowd going absolutely mad. They know that Maxi is bound to score more than 9.65. Her average score on the beam is probably around... Oh, and there's the roar. She's done it.
three gold medals for Maxi Nauk. 9.9 .9 a score there. Again, the same countries on the rostrum as we saw on the asymmetric bars. First, Maxi Nauk, second, Wen Chang, China, and third, Tracy Talavera, USA. Now, the moment that everybody's been waiting for, a favorite moment in women's gymnastics. Elena Davidova demonstrates her floor routine. moment of the routine with her. And they acknowledge it. Last chance for a gold medal for the leader. Can she make it? Salvage something from these championships. A beautiful floor routine. She was again second after the preliminaries. Looking for a really high score here. And should get it. And now we see the middle tumble, which is the one and a half twist into a punch front, the most original move. 9.9 .9 she scored. Will it be enough? Her teammate Ilyenko could still overtake her. Now, Zoya Grancharova from Bulgaria with a really dynamic routine. The blaze of colour of her leotard just suits the tempo of the music. Really bright. Three twists she went for there, didn't quite get round. Second of her three tumbling runs. Oh, and a very solid double back somersault there. example of a different type of interpretation of floor routine, really dynamic, almost jerky, and a double back from the fault to finish. Yes, that was a change. A real surprise in these championships, the young Bulgarians. They've really come through delightfully. Grand River from Bulgaria and the floor routine. She's certainly in with chance of the medals. And there again, we see that very solid landing out of the double back somersault. A lot of difficulty in that routine. Triple twist and a good score of 9.85. Radika Danka from Romania.
insult that I've seen from any woman in these championships. The lift was superb. Interpretation here from Faridika. They're showing rather more elegant performances now. I think they've taken a note out of the Soviet book. And a very stylish performance. Radika showed there good interpretation of the music, good timing, solid tumbling, and she greets her audience. Good finish there for the Romanians. They've really had a disappointing championship. Remember, they came to these championships as world champions and have gone out without a medal. Duncan score, 9.75. Everything in this floor championship depends on the performance of the next little girl, Natalia Ilyenko from the Soviet Union. And what a start. She nailed the landing. pieces of the routine which make it so delightful to watch. She's really very elegant around the neck and the shoulder line. Zelenko led this competition after the first round. All now depends on this last tumbling run. Can she land it properly? Oh, and she can of Beautiful, double tight back to finish. You wouldn't think she got the strength. She's such a slim little girl, but landed that beautifully. Well, that brought a smile to her face, and I haven't seen her smile very much in these championships. But the audience is going on, cheering, saluting, an absolutely brilliant, delightful performance. Look for the leg extension in this tumbling, stretching, pushing, Another flip flap, and then a double back from the close to finish. There it is, 9.95. She's done it, she's won the floor championship. Natalia Ilyenko first, Davidova second, and Grancharova third.